today we have the Crimson Slaughter, the Founder Planet, that Time and the Imperium have forgot, but there's still defenders here, Imperial defenders, at uh, what looks to be the Imperial Guard with the older Mark equipment. Uh, they're ready to defend their forgotten planet from the slaughter. I'm playing a Milstrom of War mission. It's going to fit quite nicely with the theme that we just got going there. It's Contact Lost. So this is the mission where you get an objective card on your first turn and then to generate objective cards you must hold objectives. So it could be a difficult one for the Imperial Guard generally but uh, this will be using the Talon Doctrine so these are actually quite fast movers so it shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be too bad for them and uh, it's just going to be a full on charge from the Hordes of Chaos as you can imagine. And for those who are interested, this is a map called Urban Wasteland, and it's from Deep Cut Studio, so I'll put that link in the description if you'd like to check that out. Right, we've got 2,000 points of Crimson Slaughter. We're going to be using the Renegade Chapter's uh, Legion trade, so everyone's going to be able to advance and charge if you're infantry or a Hellbrute, so it's pretty good. Uh, it's a Battalion Detachment, and we've also got a Vanguard Detachment, so we've got seven command points to play with. And uh, all of the army is going to be Mart of Slanesh, aside from this unit here, they're going to be uh, the Mart of Corn because they've got a Cornate banner and rhino. So uh, we'll start with the Warlord, it's going to be Cranon in the centre there, he's got Plasma Pistol and Power Sword. Uh, because he's got the Mart of Slanesh, he's going to be able to have Intoxicating Elixir Artifact, so it's going to give him uh, plus one strength and these attacks and his warlord trait's going to be unholy fortitude and so he's going to get a plus one for his wound as well he's going to have an extra wound and on a six he ignores wounds so he's gone up on a few stats there with that combination uh, he's got his second in command the exalted champion here it's Vrosh Tatsol he's going to have the power axe and a combi melter on his back uh, we've got uh, what's his name Drasnich he's going to be a dot apostle so he's got the mace and a ball pistol and uh, for a fourth HQ this one's going to be heading the vanguard detachment to the sorcerer he's got a jump pack and the staff that you see uh, so for troops for the battalion detachment we've got two squads of chaos marines the one at the back as we see has got the corn uh, mark with the corn icon they're going to have the rhino uh, there's a flamer in there in this one mark of slanesh uh, there's a plasma gun in there We've got 20 cultists, there's two heavy stubbers in there. We've got a unit, a big unit, of 15 possessed. These have got the Mark Slanesh, of course, just to remind you, because that's very important for what they have planned. So these move very fast, especially in this Renegade army. Now we've got the unit of Raptors, so the champion's got a Power Fist and a Lightning Claw. And there's a Flamer in there, and then we've got an Obliterated Squad. The Hellbrood out of the Dark Vengeance box with the multi melter and power fist he's also got a flamer built into his power fist that's what we've given and we've got a unit of chosen five the uh, leader he's got a power fist and a bull pistol as uh, power axe and lightning claws in there as well and then of course they're going to have the land raider to ride around in so that's got the combi butler on top so the sorcerer he's the one to look out for he's, he's the linchpin of this he's got two psychic powers which are very important uh, we've got warp time we all know what what time does and because he's slanesh he's got the psychic power it's delightful agonies it basically gives you a feel no pain of five plus on a unit with slanesh so that's one to look out for we have two thousand points of astral militarum as you can see these are the old Cadian metal figures and i believe they're produced by the Perry twins way back when and they've seen some action over the years and they've been in various tournaments and they've, by and large they've done all right now we're using these as tall on today because uh, I, I felt we needed to give them a trot out on this uh, nice uh, mat here which is very uh, appropriate to their colors so we're using tall on detachment so um, we're going to give the uh, the Cadians uh, a bit of a rest because uh, they, they, they kind of eschewed the Chimeras and the uh, Valkyries and the Sentinels as being part of their armory. Uh, not really too appropriate for Cadians, but 
very appropriate for Talon. So we've got uh, two detachments here. On the left, we've got the um, Vanguard detachment. It's a spearhead. Spearhead detachment, sorry, yeah. Spearhead detachment, and said by uh, the commander and the demolisher. He has uh, also two metal guns and the sponsons, and he has a heavy boulder. And we've got two exterminator Lehman Russ over there. Um, the one at the back has flamers, three of them, heavy flamers. The one at the front has the last cannon and the hull and two heavy boulders. And we've got a uh, basilisk with a heavy flamer and we've got three last cannon. And so the main detachment, the Italian detachment, is led by um, the captain there. He's quite a carrot ace. I've won too many pork pies, however, but he's <laughs> he's going to give it his best shot today. And he's got a shotgun, as you can see. Next to him, we have a Lord Commissar. Now he has what looks like a sword and a power fist. Well, uh, power fist, um, you got to buy a power sword for the model to convert it to the heirloom, uh, which is the uh, the claws of the Desert Tigers. So he's got that as his heirloom weapon. And then we've got uh, the Psyker next to them. He's got the, uh, he's got two powers, uh, forget the Night Shroud and Mental Fortitude. So we have uh, a bit of morale um, serving grace there with him. And over here we've got uh, some elites, um, starting with the Command Squad as our last cannon. And we've got a Commissar with a bolt gun some kind of rubber axe I think and then we've got some rattlings there ten of them little cherubs and then we've got um, some fast attack yeah fast attack we've got three sentinels and we've got the multi lasers and we've got a hellhound with a heavy boulder and flamer there and we've got some heavies uh, some weapon squads we've got uh, heavy boulders, and mortars, about 300 mil mortars, those I guess, and then we've got um, some squads at the back there, four of them. We have missile launcher and a com link in two of them, and we have a, uh, an auto cannon and a plasma gun and two others. And we've got transports, the chimeras. Outfitted as you see. Okay, so for deployment, uh, the Crimson Slaughter are scheduled to go first, lest the initiative be stolen from them. Uh, so we've got conscripts on this objective. There's a Marine unit in support, is the Hellbrood. In the Land Raider, we've got Cranon and the Exalted Champion and the Dark Apostle and the Chosen. In this Rhino, we've got the Corn related combat squad, and then we've got the big mass of possessed here so in deep strike or what used to be deep strike is three obliterators the raptors and the sorcerer ready to come down so who knows where they might end up so the army is ready to roll out onto at least two objectives here that are within their grasp so the astronaut arm have set up behind the uh, fortress of redemption so we've got the two squads with the auto cannons they're probably looking to combine squad uh, into a big 20 man squad at some point We've got the Sorcerer in support, uh, there's four Chimeras in the backfield but these are empty, all of the bodies are out and about. i have got the two Lehman Russ Executioners in there, Hellhound looking to rush out into the lines at any given moment, got the Basilisk in the corner like you would expect. Uh, the Sentinels have been told they're looking to just pick off any deep strikers that may come in, just more fire and this heavy bolter team that isolated these are one of the first units that uh, went down but the Imperial Guard had to change tack when uh, the chaos started to reveal how they were going to set up. So the scouts or the rattling snipers they're the last to go down so they're set up in this building looking to try and pick off any characters so they've got a good line of sight right down that channel there so they can pick off any important characters so we're going to have to make uh, tracks to get hold of them cut their little heads off with chainsaws all that nasty stuff that chaos can do and for objectives that the Astro Militarum have basically got in the possession already is this one 
uh, this one in the middle of all the tanks. This one is just out of their deployment zone, so they're going to have to put in some work to get that. But there's units because the Talan they've used the ambush stratagem, and off the board they've got a the demolisher with the um, melter guns. Got a, a last cannon team off the table as well, and an infantry squad with a rocket launcher. So there's three squads. Uh, with the FAQ, it can't be three vehicles anymore. So the, uh, the Talons were really looking forward to bringing on three vehicles, but it now can only be one. So there's one Lehman Rust to come on from outflank, or what used to be known as outflank, and uh, last kind of team in a platoon squad. There's some tactical application ready to be deployed at some point. We've already began to move out, there's the Crimson Slaughter, the Astra Militarum could not steal the initiative, uh, didn't get it on camera though, but they didn't steal. So we've got uh, a very, very fast moving force here, so the uh, everyone's advanced basically, just about. Uh, the Possessed, they've advanced a bit here, so they've gone right up to this objective. Uh, the Berserkers, or not the Berserkers, they're just corn related, they're not Berserkers though. They get out of the Rhino, they advance, 9 inches, so they're right shoulder to shoulder with the possessed uh, at the end of the moving phase the sorcerer has come down right amongst them so he's protected uh, from any any outflankers that may appear the land raider that's moved on still got all of the characters in and the chosen they haven't got out the cultists they're now spread out so still holding the objective we've got some cultists on this side cultists on that side spreading out that's basically just try and stop these outflankers coming in trying to block the 9 inch uh, edge of the table to make sure they don't come on that's why this rhino is staying here because what we don't want to do is this Lehman Rust to come on with the multi melters and shoot the land raider dead so that's what we're trying to prevent here it still might happen but I can't see where it could happen at the moment we've tried our best we're in the middle of the table we've blocked the back and well, blocked the side and rear from that uh, tank coming on at the very least anyway and this uh, unit here, this Space Marine unit, they've moved forward, they advanced as well. Still can charge and advance, it's a long charge to the Rattlings, but it's possible uh, to see how they do, but it's a, it's a longer charge than we'd want. Uh, we've got these Raptors, they came in at the end of the turn, so they've landed right on this objective. Uh, wouldn't normally bring in the Raptors so soon, but they're in, they've got good support. The Hellbrute ran 6, so with his already good move of uh, the move faster than normal dreadnoughts he's really shifting so he's coming around putting a real threat on this side so we've brought in the obliterators as well in close support so they've landed in some sort of gymnastic cheerleader stance there I don't know what you would call it but they're going to put the pressure straight on and they're Z Slaneshi enhanced so you can play a strategy where they can fire twice so that's what we expect from them uh, but that is it so we're going to move on to psychic phase right, we're moving straight on to psychic phase now this is pretty crucial to the plans of the crimson slaughter uh, we are outside 24 inches from the psyche from the imperial guard so there's going to be no ability to deny the witch here so what we're going to do first is warp time we're going to try and slingshot this unit around even further so it's Warp value 6, so we need to pass that. No, we fail. We're going to use a command reroll to reroll that one. We need to pass this, and we don't. That is catastrophic to the, to the plans of the Crimson Slaughter. That's not good. Right, next, we're going to do Delightful Agonies. Because we've failed on this unit, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to play it on the Obliterators. If we passed that, we would have played it on them because there would have been a hard push around this side where they would have got shot, but since the obliterators are now in the line of fire we'll have to put it on them what it is it's basically a fail no pain of five much like disgustingly resilient for nurgle so again that's a six but it must be passed that does pass very disappointed about warp time but that's just how it goes right so we started shooting with the crimson slaughter so the cultists they fire first so we've got two heavy stubbers and a couple of auto guns uh, do okay against the rattling snipers we killed two and we're going to move on to the big guns now so we've got the land raider it's going to fire up at the valkyrie it's the only thing i can see and it's uh, pretty obscured we only see the wing so we're just going to say it's got a cover save so we've got last cannons going at the flyer 
all the rest of the guns, heavy bolters and uh, combi bolters, are going to go at the heavy weapons team here. So we'll do uh, la Land Raider last comes first at the flyer. Hitting on fours because it's hard to hit. We get two. Threes to wound. Don't get any. It's not a good sign. Right. We've got heavy bolter shots at this heavy weapons team here. So hitting on threes. Okay. And threes to wound. Again, it's not good. Don't know where these rolls are coming from. So two wounds. Uh, need to save on sixes before you lose a team. So only one wound, so it's not going well. And then we've got the combi bolter, double hit. No wounds. Where are my dice going? Right, so it's not been good for shooting so far. Uh, so we've popped some more with the rhino in the background, just in case any outflankers come on, we want to take that out. Uh, so we're going to open up with the only thing we can now. We could fire the raptors. In fact, we will fire the raptors. They're going to fire at the, at the ratlins, I think. So we've got... Uh, three pistols and that's it so we've got three hits two to wound against the ratlins so there's three wounds against the ratlins saving on fours because they are in cover and they get a plus two so two more go down for the ratlins right the obliterators they're going to fire at this hellhound so uh they've got a weird weapon so it's strength six plus d3 so it's going to be strength eight that's pretty good ap minus one and uh th minus three no, sorry, just three damage. So that's pretty strong shots here. They get four shots each. All right, so we've got four shots each. Firing at the Hellhound here. We're hitting on threes. Okay, that's looking like it's okay. Only four misses. And strength eight, so we're leaving threes against this. So we've only missed two. So this is only AP one. So saving on fours with the Hellhound. Right, that's pretty bad actually dropped five and it's damage three each so it's 15 wounds put on the hellhound so it's gone so it explodes on a four a hellhound does not explode but that is first blood that's pretty good so that is everything shot from the crimson slaughter or is it because we're going to play endless cacophony on the obliterators which means because the slanesh costs us two command points to do but they can fire again and at a different target if they want so they're going to target this Lehman Rust, it's got heavy flamers on, don't like that. Uh, so we're going to do the same rigmarole again. So it's strength 6 plus D3, so it's only strength 7. Uh, it's going to be AP minus 1, this doesn't look like it's going to be very good. And only damage 1, so the very low so we can muster. Okay, so hit on 3s. That's still pretty good. Uh, wounded on fives is the hard part because we're all so low but there's two so AP minus one so saving on fours again one goes through but this time it's only one damage it's not as severe as the last time nowhere near as severe so that is the end of the shooting phase right so going on to assault here we're going to have the raptors they're going to try and assault into the heavy weapons team so to help them out with the overwatch they're going to play vengeance for Cadia and the warlords Warlord trait is you get that bat on a five, that command point. Yeah, Grand Strategist. Grand Strategist is the Warlord trait. He does get a bat, that is a six. Uh, so that's going to come off. So what it is, you reroll fail to hit and the wound roll. So he's still hitting on sixes, but reroll to hit could be very beneficial here. So heavy ball is the last stand. Let's see if they get, get some good hits here. So there's two so far, so reroll all of the misses. So no more, just two. So threes to wound, and then you can re-roll any failed wound rolls. So one fail, re-roll. Both go through, right. So seven on fours, because it's AP minus one. And we'll fail two, so <laughs> we've lost two Raptors. Which ones do we take? It's got to be a hand-to-hand -hand one, and I think a Flamer guy's got to go, unfortunately. He's going to have to get some stuff done with the chain swords. So here we go, we're going in, that was deadly overwatch and we fail our charge anyway. We're going to use a stratagem to re-roll. Need to get in there. We do get in there on a 10. Right, the Raptors are in. It's this squad's turn now. They need a 7-inch charge to get to the wall of the building. Uh, the, the 
snipers have already overwatched, didn't get any hits, so we need seven hits. Average, can we get it? Yes, we do. So in they go. This is the massive benefit of being able to advance and charge so fast with the Renegade Chaos. Okay, so we've done combat, uh, easy kill for this unit here, just clear out the Ratlands, didn't have a chance really. Over here, completely different story, uh, kill two bases, but uh, the Heavy Weapons team survivors fight back and kill a Raptor, so I've lost three Raptors to only two Heavy Weapons teams, so still getting them out of the way, but it was at high cost, so it's now under morale. So these, uh, because I lost two bases and they're within one, within range of the Raptors, they're taking a further minus one penalty, so the only leadership six with a minus three. So that is going to be eight, that base is history. Uh, we have a morale check of our own to do for all the six, we're going to lose another Raptor. No, we're going to hold, but they're now in the wind, below half strength, it's not good. This unit is out in the open as well, but they've done their job. We did pick up first blood in that turn. And we're going to have to measure this, because we might have, with that charge, we might have been able to get into the deployment zone. I think we have, actually. Yep, so we just measured. Uh, they still are within the deployment zone, so we will get behind enemy lines, which is the only card we had this turn. So, yep, we're going to score that one. And first blood, there's two points for the Crimson Slaughter. So put the pressure on, it could have been worse if we just got warp time off with those possessed they would have uh, hauled themselves around the fortification, put the pressure on this side. Imperial Guard, turn one. So the sun use these uh, Talon traits, in come the outflankers, so we've got the infantry squad here, uh, the demolisher decides it can only come on here really uh, mainly because the Crimson Slaughter have found out in such a way that they've blocked all real options over here for the outflankers to come on so that's why we've made a wide swing around here just to block off these infiltrators so they've been left with little choice but to come on from here uh, the last cannon team there they are behind the tree blending in so the demolisher is going to try and take on the possessed because these don't have the psychic power on for delightful agonies uh, they feel that the opportunity is now to whittle these down, so there's a big possibility these will be uh, under big firepower, and they might be crushed in fact. But the Valkyrie in hover mode, uh, before that move, it deposited this squad here uh, to hold objective 3, so that we're going to get that point. Uh, Sorcerer steps forward in the back there, he's going to look to smite the obliterators and the tanks. So, like we say over here, all the tanks with the flamers have pulled forward, the two chimeras, because these are Talon, uh, all vehicles can move without any penalty for shooting, so the flamers have come forward, try and take on the obliterators, the multi-lasers, all the weapons are going to be able to shoot uh, without any penalty, so the, these have got the uh, 5 plus feel no pain effect on them, so they're going to have to come through here, and this tank pulls forward with its flamers, it's going to look to finish off the raptors, so they've had a terrible time and it's only going to get worse for them. Right, so the side gate is going to try and smite the obliterators. They are the nearest that you can see. So that comes off on an 11. It's a super smite. We're going to have to try and deny that with uh, the sorcerer over there. We have to get double six. No, just one. So that goes through. So it's D6 mortal wounds. This couldn't be any worse. Four. Right. Fortunately, we do have ignore wounds on a four plus with the... Uh, with the psychic power in effect, we do have some defense, we need fives, we get three, whoa. We'll fill one, so that's a wound on an obliterator, we've got off pretty light there, that could have been deadly. Right, the Slaman Rust is going to fire, literally the fire, at uh, the Raptors, and then the turret is going to fire twice at the Hellbrood. So how many shots are these Flamers going to go for? So that's nine. Wound on threes, this is going to be ugly. Right, so just three drop there, so that's six, seven on fours, I think their time is up, yeah, so they're wiped out. Right, we've got eight shots from the autocannon turret, at the Hellbrook, so these are hitting on fours, that's pretty good, four, and wounding on fours. 
there's two and seven on threes fill one make one says two damage on the hellbrood right, imperial guard have started shooting with the small arms fire we've got this infantry platoon with the las guns actually kill a possessed marine and then the auto cannons at the back there and a plasma gun kill another so it did get some good saves against the auto cannons but it was the las guns they were really impressive uh, with the, no, it was this squad that had the orders for reroll ones. Did get all the hits with the auto cannons. It was looking, looking scary for a second. We still lost two out of this squad. Uh, we're going to move on to the obliterators now. See what kind of uh, fire they come across. Right, so this last cannon is going to have the first shot. Uh, it's got reroll ones order on it, so uh, hits on a three because it's from a command squad as well. Gets that three, so wounds on two. Gets the wound. Right, so we are saving, our armor save is two, but we are in cover, so we're going to get plus one to this dice, so after all, uh, we'll be saving on a four in cover, we make it to absorb that last cannon hit. Right, so the last guns fire, even the commissar with his bolt gun fire, but don't hurt the obliterators, so we're going to move on to the tanks now, which one's going to fire first? Right, so we start with this one here. Okay, so heavy flamer is in range. Oh, oh, sorry, we'll start with this one here, the, the last cannon one. Right, okay. So the last can. Gets a hit, crucial. Gets that wound, so sit on four again against the last cannons. We'll make it. Absolutely fantastic. He's got two heavy bolters and an auto cannon, so which one's he firing for? Heavy bolters. Six shots out of the heavy bolters with Talon, they don't take penalties, but he's missed everyone anyway. And now eight shots from the exterminator auto cannon. Four's needed, gets four, it's average. Three's to wound now. Gets three, right. So these are AP minus one, but because we are in cover, it uh, goes right back to uh, our normal save of two. I'll fill one, so that's an obliterator dead. In fact, what we'll do is, do we use a stratagem? Yes, we're gonna use a stratagem. Keep alive. Yeah, so we'll pass. With a stratagem, we're down to two stratagem uh, command points left, should I say, but the obliterator lives. Okay, so moving on to this one. Yep. Then we use the uh, flamer. So four shots out of this one. Three to wound. Okay, there's four wounds. And again, because we're in cover, the AP won't matter, so back to two saves. Two's up. Take a wound, we're on our last wound for one of the obliterators. So the, um, can you shave him off with the multi -laser. laser? Three shots, gets one hit because of Talon being good. Uh, yep, there's a wound. Two to save, makes it. Right, he still survives. Right, next Chimera, same thing. Flamer. How many shots? And then um, we're going to fire the multi laser and the stubber at these guys. Okay, so the Flamer first then. Gets two. Gets two again because we're in cover, the AP doesn't matter. And we die now. We've lost, we've run a lot of ones and we've lost an obliterator because of it. Right, so the multi laser, multi -laser at the squad up here gets two hits, wounds on threes, gets one, no AP, save on a three, we get it. Heavy stubber. Stubber. One, in a four, does not get it. Right, the scout sentinels stayed still, didn't have to with Talon, but they did stay still, but they're hitting on fours and they're going for the obliterators, so more multi-laser shots coming their way. So three shots each, that's a good round of fire from them, only three miss. And wounded on threes, strength six. Right, so there's four. Again, we're saving on twos, but it's not been working out well for us, but we'll get all of them this time. There's still another Chimera to shoot. At the back there, what's yeah. he going to do? So, um, I'm going to put this uh, multi laser on into these if we can reach. I think we should be able to get them. Okay, yeah. Easily in range. So, yeah, force to hit. All hit, pretty good. Three to win. There's two wounds, save on threes. Get them both. So, this squad is saving very well, gotta say. Right, so we've got the last Chimera in the corner, he's going to fire at the obliterators, this one's got a heavy bolter so it can contribute more fire. So the multi laser first, hitting on fours, gets two, hitting well with the Chimeras, gets one, saving on two, makes it, heavy bolter this time, gets one, needs a three, 
does not get it. Right, we're getting down to the basilisk now, right in the corner, and to help it out, we're going to play Vengeance for Cadia. So we're going to see if they can uh, take out this Hellbrute. So they're going to reroll the hit and the wound roll. So number of shots. Number of shots. So pick the best of two dice. We'll have a six. <laughs> we'll have a, it's looking nasty. Uh, so hitting on fours with re rolls. This might be good night to the Hellbrute. So re roll those misses. Let's see if we can bring vengeance to Kadia. Only one miss at the end of the day. So strength nine, wounding on threes with re rolls. So two fill. But then the convert says five in total. Right, we're going to need to save these on sixes because it's AP3. So might be the end of the hell route. We save one, but three go through. So it's D3 apiece. So we just roll four dice and we'll see how this works out. So three, two, so that's five, six, uh, six seven. seven. So he's gone anyway. He already, he already took two wounds. Let's see if he explodes. Does not explode. So the hell, hell brute has gone down. That's a shame. I was really looking forward to using him. He's going to come run around that corner, but he's been taken out. Vengeance is served. Right, we're coming down here for yet another tank. It's going to be the Demolisher. He's already ordered himself for uh, Gunner's Kill on sight. So he's going to reroll ones, and he's firing at the uh, possessed. So what's he doing first? So do the Demolisher. Demolisher cannon. So because there's more than five in that unit, it's going to be D six shots and he's firing twice as well so he's getting four out of the first one and you might as well do the second one as well and just do it all together I'm going to read what that one so command roll command roll right so nine shots coming at them right so see if you get that stratagem back in a five then yes yes he does get up the back Okay, so it's all going the Imperial Guard's way here, getting all the dice. Uh, let's see if we can get it again. So, nine shots at these. Hitting on fours, re-rolling. Not hitting on threes, because he's a tank commander. So, hitting on threes, re-roll ones. This could be deadly. And it probably will be. All but one. Wound on twos. Because it's strength ten. A whopping strength ten. Oh, right. So, two go. But we've got... Uh, there's five, six wounds on the possessed. Nasty stuff. Got invulnerable stairs of five. We'll make two. Uh, so it's D six wounds each. So do these one at a time. See what happens. So one's dead. Second one takes one wound. So he's going to take another wound. So there's him dead. So there's two dead. Next one. Uh, there's another one dead. So three dead in total. So that could have been worse, could have been a lot worse, but we've got two melted guns now. Hitting on threes, rerolling ones because of Talon. So, yep, gets them both. Wound on twos because strength eight. Only gets one. Same on five. Do not make it so how much damage for this guy? Five. So, there's another possessed little. Up. Right, you've got a heavy bolt on the nose as well. Mm -hmm. So, we've got two hits. Gets two wounds, and we'll take a wound on another. Right, possessed to continue to take a hammer, and we lost six and a wound. Uh, this squad chimes in, does not do any damage, but now there's three last cannons behind the tree uh, at them. So because they moved, they're hitting on fives. So not as punishing as the tank in the corner, so they all fill. So we're going to do the Valkyrie next. Because it's in hover mode, it's going to get a plus one to hit, but it did move with the heavy weapon, so it's back on fours. So going to do these all together and see what the outcome is. All right, so the Valkyrie, it actually does contribute some good shots. It's been woeful in previous games when it doesn't have that uh, have that hover ability, but now with the new codex it does. It's actually come away with four AP minus one wounds on these, so we're going to have to save on fours. Uh, so we've one of the possessed is killed, and then another possessed is killed, and then we've got one wound to save on a three for the multi-laser which we saved so we've lost this wounded possessed guy and then another possessed is killed so we've lost eight possessed this round maybe we should have put what uh what was it 
delightful agonies on them instead. So we've been found out there. Alright, so that's the end of the Imperial Guard turn. They've scored one point for holding objective three. There's the guy holding the objective. So got to see some good Talon trickery there coming in from the side. And not only that, it's the ability to hit with those sponsons uh, on the full ballistic skill. As well as the Chimeras of the multi lasers did chip in, did worry, uh, and did more than worry, actually killed an obliterator. Uh, so, one point for them, and now we're on the morale check, so we've lost eight in this unit, so whatever we would roll, that's what we would lose for the possessed. But uh, we're just going to play Insane Bravery Stratagem, which means we'll automatically pass our morale, but it costs us two stratagem points to do that, two command points. So we've only got one command point left. So that means we can't do our double fire with the obliterators anymore because that just cost us daily. So we've automatically passed using that stratagem. But we've lost the Hellbrute as well. We've lost some important firepower and lost half an important squad. Okay, so moving phase for the Crimson Slaughter. We've try to stay aggressive here. Uh, the Rhino's moving out. It's going to look to try and bulldoze these infantry squad down. Uh, the Land Raider's staying still. Still holding that objective. We're going to put the last cannons on this uh, Lehman Rust. Can't allow this to live. Uh, both squads here have moved down with the Sorcerer. We're going to look to slingshot with warp time again. See if we can uh, make that come off this time. And the big posse you've chosen has got out of the Lehman Rus. Gone out of the Land Raider, excuse me. So here they come, they've advanced. So uh, so is the Exalted Champion and the Dark Apostle. Uh, Crannon, he's staying within six of the Land Raider at reroll ones. And he's within six of the uh, the Obliterators, so they're going to reroll ones. Over here though, we're gonna, he's got a Melted Gun, but he's at seven inches. Just couldn't run far enough to get there close to do that. But we're going to try and charge and see what we're going to do. Uh, pretty desperate after losing that Hellbrute, so we're going to see if we can keep the attack going. Uh, over here, these just step down uh, onto this object of six. That's what we needed, so we're going to score a point for that, whatever happens. Right, so Psychic Phase, the Sorcerer is going to do uh, Delightful Agonies on the, uh, on the Possessed Squad first, see if we can get that off. On a six, we do. So they've now got a feel no pain uh, roll. <laughs> I probably should have had the last time. See if I dispel that one. Okay, going to try and dispel it. No, no dice. Right, we're going to try the one that we couldn't get the last time. Should I re-roll that one? It's a command roll. Okay. No. no, it's still a one. So still a six doesn't happen. Right, we're going to warp time the same unit. Come on, please work. Right, it does work this time. So we're going to move again. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to move down to the last cannons and tie these up because these are a good unit. I want to dispatch these straight away. So they're off the go, crowding around the last cannon team. We thought about maybe he's going towards the uh, demolisher, but we're going to trust the land raider to take this out. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do uh, every shot from the land raider is going to go at the demolisher. So here we go. We've got four last cannon shots. Reroll ones because Cranon is over there. So luckily we are rerolling ones. Oh no, only two hits. Threes to wound. We don't get any. These last cannons have not worked at any point. So it's not the game for Crimson Slaughter it seems. We've had ourselves in, in good positions to do stuff, but the dice are not coming in. Heavy bolters, let's see if we can do something. Get all the hits. Right. Uh, two wounds. 
seven on fours, eight three minus one. Right, one goes through, just one pitiful wound on the Lehman Rust, that was pathetic. Right, I'm gonna try more high value shots here since the Land Raider was such a duck egg. Uh, we're gonna have fire, melt the gun shot, he is in range with this Lehman Rust, so if we can just get a solid hit here, uh, he can, it's an assault weapon, so at a minus one. So needing a four to hit, and we've failed that as well. Not good. Right, obliterators, they are going to fire at this Lehman Russ as well. So again, with their strange weaponry. So it's strength six plus one, so it's strength seven. A, uh, AP minus two, and damage three. Right, so we're getting some strong damage out of it. But we're down four shots now. So, let's get dice. Right, hitting on threes, we roll ones because of Krannon. Right, so we've got five hits. Needing fives, this is turning out to be really difficult. So we've failed every single one. The attack is faltering, what can we say? Well, I've got a plasma gun at long range. Might as well do that at this Lehman Russ. We're going to overcharge it. We do hit, in a four. No, absolutely not. It's not working, nothing's working. All right, so that was a short shooting round from the Crimson Slaughter. We fired a couple of bolts at the Lehman Rust, but it didn't hurt. Uh, it's just all down to charges now. The firepower was woeful. Uh, this fired into these, got three hits, three wounds, and saved them all. So it's just gonna have to plow into them, see if it does any damage there. But we want to charge in now, we're hoping this is gonna be our our round because the shooting phase certainly wasn't right shooting phase wasn't our phase but we're in on the assaults now we didn't take any casualties in overwatch from any uh any assault just one wound on the obliterator but we'll come to that in a second so these have gone in on this squad here We're gonna just turn these over no doubt uh the possessed are going in on the last cannons no damage in the overwatch this Rhino has gone in the combat here, did get a hit in the overwatch with the rocket, but failed the wound. Uh, so he's going to mow these down as well. Over here, over here, the Chosen, uh, well, so first of all, the Obliterate is going against the two Chimeras here. Take the overwatch from the Heavy Flamers, uh, only one wound on the Obliterate is. Then the Chosen follows suit, they're in on this Chimera. Uh, the Dark Apostle goes in, the Exalted Champion fails to get in, but he is still within three. Uh, six inches to give rerolls, uh, wound rerolls to these guys. Crannon doesn't even bother to charge, he just stands there and flaps his cape around. So, uh, what we've got here is we're going to fight the combat and see what happens, but uh, when we come to pile in, we're going to pile in this guy in an inch towards this Lehman Russ. So, he can't fight the Lehman Russ, but what he's going to do is just wrap it up in combat enough to make it have to drop out to fire next turn, and we don't have to take the Overwatch off it. Same with this Obliterator, he's going to pile in to that one but he's going to fight this chimera so being tricky with our pylons it's all we can do when our shooting phase is so bad we're just being gamey with our charges so here we go we're going to see how this turns out right, so first fight was the uh chosen the piled in made sure they got within an inch of this can't fight it but uh it still is locked in combat now but we've had our power fist axe and lightning claws attack this with reroll and filled wounds and the hit rolls from the dark apostle and the exalted champion We've wrecked it. So on a six, it's going to explode, and that would really sour the grapes here. And it does explode. Mm. Right, so D3 mortal wounds on these. So there's two mortal wounds. We're going to take uh, a bolter guy, and we can't afford to take this bolter guy because we're not locking in combat anymore. So we're going to have to take the axe. Absolutely horrible. Uh, D3 mortal wounds on the champion on the dark apostle rather so two wounds for him nothing we can do and then d3 model wounds for the obliterators and there's two which kills an obliterator because one had a wound off the overwatch so we're gonna have to take him awful stuff all right so that's the damage on the crimson slaughter we're going to do the damage on the imperial vehicles now so this one it's going to take three mortal wounds so that's not too bad of a trade-off this chimera it's going to take two mortal wounds. This Lehman Russ is going to take two mortal wounds. And the Chimera behind is one mortal wound. 
Alright, so after that mega explosion we'll fight with the Dot Apostle and the Obliterator, no damage on either vehicle. But we are we have piled in where we wanted to be now, so we're in contact with all these vehicles. Couldn't fight the Lehman Rust because we didn't charge it, but we have sucked it into that combat now. As we'll have this one. These can still fight the units, but we just can't fight them. But sucking into the combat is what we wanted to do. But that explosion was something we did not want to see. Right, over here the combat went as planned, so these pile in around to this objective, so now controlling this one. Uh, kill us down to two men left and a wound on the heavy weapons team, so they're yet to fight back, but they probably won't make it through the morale phase. Uh, over here, more charging to go. The possessed wipe out that heavy weapons team, that was pretty crucial, we wanted to do that. And now they're going to try and take on, or at least harass, this tank commander and the demolisher. And this rhino runs over a single guardsman. So the guardsmen will fight back over here. Let's see how they do. Right, so they pile in and then the guardsmen fight. And the guardsmen fill the wound. And then the fill morale check. So the guardsmen squad's gone. Did not want to auto pass that. They did have the command points to try and auto pass. But they just want to free up this unit to shoot at them next time. Uh, so that looks like what's going to happen. They're going to have to duck behind those sandbags. Uh, but that is the end of the turn. Just got one point for Will of Chaos over there with that unit behind the sandbags in the distance. They score that objective. But we are now in the lines of the Imperial Guard. We've tied up some of the vehicles. They're not going to have as much firepower as the last turn. Uh, but if we can just hold on this turn, I feel like we could be in the fight. But if we have a devastating turn on us here, could snuff out all attacks. Because the Crimson Slaughter are now very weak. Had a poor show on that last turn to do with the last cannons and took a hammer in with the exploding vehicles over there. And only scoring one point out of it, we're just going to have to really hold on and try and push through. Right, Imperial Guard, turn two. And uh, do movement over here. This unit just stays still. If they broke off the combat, they wouldn't be able to do anything anyway. They're just going to stand in that combat. Uh, this pulls back a little bit. It's going to stand and deliver probably wipe out this unit. There's still more than five so that demolisher turret is going to fire on maximum power. And over here the Lehman Rust breaks off from combat. It's not going to be able to contribute any firepower this turn so that plan worked but there's still more that can just kill this unit. There's only three left, lost two in the explosion. Also uh, it's worth mentioning the vehicles did fight the units back uh, in that phase because when you pile into them they still can fight you uh, but all of them missed. Nothing happened. That's why we forgot about it. So anyway, the tank drop backed. This one has done the same. Not going to be able to fire this turn. This one's staying in the combat. But these are on borrowed time. There's multi-lasers. This one's still okay. Flame are ready to go. The sentinels are looking at them. Uh, and over here, this unit. Uh, try to get them a cover save, but you've got to be within an inch of the barricade. And the, you, the three guys behind, they're blocking that unit from getting a cover save. So they're just going to have to save on the armour against this massive line of LAS guns and assorted heavy weapons. Looking looking pretty sick for them. Just going to have to wish them luck and hold that, <laughs> hope that ancient armour holds up. There's a lot to be shot at them. Godspeed. Right, so the sorcery is going to try and smite the obliterator straight out of combat there, see what happens to him. Uh, so that comes off on a 5 this time, we're going to try and deny it with our sorcerer on a 6, we do, so that's been blocked because our sorcerer is just behind that pillar there. So, no psychics. Alright, so this chimera is going to fire into the chosen, the heavy flamer is going to burn them out, so how many shots is this getting? And I'm going to fire this in him. Right, okay. Well, you can't because he's a character, he's not the nearest unit. So oh, you, so you have to yeah. target these. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, so if you go heavy flamer, you go. it's getting two shots, that's not not what I wanted to see. So threes, only one, seven on a four, dies, so we're going to take the baller guy. Right, we've got the multi laser, three shots. That's cocked out. Gets all three, wounds on threes, gets two, seven on threes again. These are the important ones because these are the guys with the weapons. Fails one, makes one, right? It's going to be the lightning claws. It's just the champion with the power fist left. He's the one that we want to see still alive. 
Right, the Sentinels are going to show them no mercy. There's just one guy left, surely they can do it. So there's uh, three shots each, hitting all fours. Here they go. Not great, only three hits. Three's to wound. Only two. Can he survive? Come on, make a name for yourself. He's dead. Right, so the big consolidated 20 man squad there were the next to fire. Uh, with first rank fire order on them, and this uh, last cannon's got uh, take aim on it as well. But the fire this rank, the big rank of 20, killed three. Two fell to the auto guns, and only one at the last gun, so not very good. Even the two plasma guns uh, filled the wounds. So they've been, been quite lucky that only lost three. Right, we're back over here now. So the tank commander, he's issued a gunner's kill on sight. He's going to reroll ones and he's targeting the uh, possessed. So here we go. So we've got two demolisher shots straight at them. So what's the damage? So D6, yeah? Yeah. So there's six shots and one shot. Reroll on command. Yeah, command reroll. So there's going to be ten shots in total. Pretty nasty. Alright, so hitting on threes, reroll on ones. It's a deadly guy. He's got them all, missed two. And rerolls and only fills one. Right, so two's to wound. He's a monster, this guy. But only fills two of them. So we're just going to roll these. Invulnerable fives needed. Oops. Get one. Oh no. So there's six and you need to roll them one at a time for wound for damage. Alright, so we've just we've just done that all at once because it takes far, far too long when you've got uh disgustingly resilient sort of delightful agonies, feel no pain thing going, uh when you're dealing with D6 damage. So that's how many's left after that massive volley. All right, two melted guns ready to go. And they both hit. This is deadly. Two to wound. Only one wound, save on five. Does not save. What's the damage of this one? So it's double dice, so it's three, and you can pick your best. So it's still three. three then. <laughs> right. Uh, need to, nope. Two fills, there's another one dead. It's only final one, and then it's the heavy bolt of the fire. And re rolls ones. So it's just one. Win on three. Gets it. Saves on a four. Fails. Disgust. Uh, ah. Delightful agonies, that's what it's called. No, so he's taken a wound, but he's, there's one left on one wound. But don't fancy his chances in the morale phase. Alright, so the possessed have all but been wiped out. And then the trend continues over here. The Valkyrie shoots at the uh, six man squad here that was left. Just don't get any of the saves, and they just all go down far too easily. Uh, so they've been wiped out. So that objective is now free for the Imperial Guard to move in on. Uh, over here, over here, this unit comes under fire from the artillery. So the mortars have a go at them, kill one, but it's the basilisk that does most of the work. So the basilisk fires over, even played once again, vengeance for Cadia. So it gets reroll to hit and wound, just nearly halves, just more than halves of the unit. So it's now fight. We've already done the fights here. No damage on either side. The mall just isn't working. Uh, but now it's a morale phase, so these lost, um, these guys lost five, so five plus one is okay. The stain, thank the dark gods, they're gonna stay. Uh, this guy in the distance, not so good, he's lost six out of his squad, so six plus four, he's gone. Nothing we can do about that, that unit is now vanished.
turn three for the Crimson Slaughter, and we feel like we're probably in the same position as the Night Lords in the last battle, where we're slowly getting chipped away at, but we are scoring points, and what we just need to do is hang around and keep scoring points. Uh, so we've pulled our objective cards, we've got Master of the Warp, which is possible, Overwhelming Firepower, which could happen, no prisoners, which is uh, will be tied up with Overwhelming Firepower, just about, and Defend Objective 4. So this is Objective 4. The Rhino has broken off this combat, gone back. It needs to hold this for this turn and the, uh, the Talon's turn. So to do this, we need to take out this Lehman Russ. And we're going to have to do it with the Misfire and Land Raider. It's got its last chance to do it, and Cranon is there, going it on. So we're going to get reroll ones with those last cannons. It is do or die, because this will surely take out the uh, Rhino with ease. And that is our main scorer this turn, I feel. Right, on this side we've got uh, this Whittle Down unit that's just going to have to hang tight, hold this objective. Uh, the Exalted Champion is advanced round this silo here. He has got a combi melter, so he's going to pump a shot into the back of this Lehman Russ, see what we can do. And then he might charge something, done or yet. But the big play here is the Sorceress swoops out from Objective 4. Uh, he's hungry for glory, he wants to come and take out the Warlord here, so it's nothing more than glory. If we can kill him, then it'll be Warlord kill, but this is just all for vengeance and appetite for his blood. Right, so the Sorcerer, he's going to use Warp Time. What he's going to try and do is get closer to this leader so we can smite him. So we need to pass this on a 6. We do. So he's going to go in closer, going to make sure he is the closest. Right, so now we're going to smite him. We need an over 5 to get this. So we're getting 8. We're going to choose to deny the witch because the sorcerer is on hand. And that denies him. So no easy wounds on the commander there. We're just going to have to get it done in close combat because he's right next to that sorcerer. I suppose he saw that one coming. Right, we're on the shooting phase. So the Lehman Russ that is going to be targeted by the Land Raider. So we're going to see if we can get this going. So we've got 4 shots of these last cannons. Rerolling ones because of the because of Cranon. So get all hits, wound on threes against the Demolisher, and we'll only get two, so you saved on sixes for this Demolisher. So both go through, we need high dice here. Ooh. We're going to use our last stratagem to reroll this two. We'll get nine, that should knock him down a tier at least, so his ballistic skill won't be as good. Right, heavy bolt is at him now. Okay, two re-rolls to be made, only one hit, it's not the best shot this guy. So three hits, fives, we'll get two, so the Demolisher is now saving on fours, any wounds will do. And one, so he gets an extra wound, so he's taking ten wounds, that's pretty good. Right, we'll finish off over here with the Combi Bolter of this squad, kill one, and then auto guns and two uh, heavy stubbers, but they did move so they weren't uh, as accurate, killed another one, so two gone from this unit here. Right, we're going to take a risk over here, we've got a plasma gun, he's going to overcharge it and he's going to fire at this Lehman Russ here, see what we're going to do. Ah, he's killed himself. So when it rains, it pours. Right, we're going to move on to this combi melter. Uh, yep, yeah, it is a combi melter, he's going to fire into the back of the Lehman Russ, because he advanced it's a minus one to hit, so we need a three, uh, sorry a four, but we do get it. And we are in double dice range, but we need a wound on a 4 first. We do get it. It goes straight through the armour at AP minus 4. So we'll get the best of two dice for damage. We'll take the 5. Right, he shot his pistol into the tank. Uh, he did save. He did get the wound, but the armour held up. Uh, over here, a bit more drastic. We're going to throw a crack grenade at the boss. See if we can get him. So we're hitting on a 3. Oops, it's gone off the table. So we miss anyway. Oh dear. Right. We're going to have to do this in close combat. All of our shots are done. Right, so charge phases. We've just gone for the easy charge here. And it was lucky we did because he only rolled a, a double one. So he's gone in on the Chimera. We're just going to have to try and get this out of the way with these three guys. See what we're going to do. Uh, right, so now for the Sorcerer. He's going to go in against the Commander. He's got a shotgun. He's going to overwatch him. Gets one hit. Because he's at half range, it's strength four. Does wound. And we save on our armour, so it's an easy charge, there's no way we're going to fail that. Just need an inch, so in he goes. And now, you opt for heroic interventions. Alright, so the guard have done the heroic intervention, so there's a commissar, he's gone in. 
and the Saiga and the Lord's going to fight. But we do fight first because we're the Charger. So we uh, shall try and strike down the Army Commander. Couldn't get it done with Smite. Couldn't get it done with a Grenade. Let's see if that huge warp staff gets it done. So he's hitting on threes. Gets them all. Even gets a death to the False Emperor. So we'll get an extra attack. We'll try and hit him with. We'll get them all. Right, these are strength six. So we'll need twos to wound. All but one. These are D3 damage a piece, so you need to save on invulnerable 5, or you're in trouble. 2 go through, right, it's D3 each, this is really, really crucial. He's only got 4 wounds, so whatever we'll get here. We've run out of stratagem, or command points rather, so we can't re-roll really any of these, so we need to get a 4. So the first one is a 1, we need to get a D3, we need to get 3 here. No, it's just another one. We've caused two wounds, he's half dead, but it's not enough. Right, so we've attacked with our second charger, who is the Exalted Champion. Doesn't do anything to the tank, but the Dark Apostle fights next, he's scheduled, and uh, puts two wounds on the tank, so we're just chipping a few wounds off. But now it's time for the Imperial Guard, so they're going to have. Might as well just do all these characters at the same time, and then we'll do the Obliterator, because it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, so we've got the Company Commander, he's got three attacks. He's hitting on threes, gets them all. Wounds on fives. Gets two. Save on threes. Fill one. So the sorcerer's taking his first wound. And now we've got the Saiga. He's got a, a staff. Uh, so he's hitting on threes. Only gets one. This is the most potent weapon amongst them. Well, command roll that one. So command reroll. Still gets a one. Right. So he's wounded on a three because it's a strong staff. Does not make it, right? It's all down to the Commissar now. Doesn't get the command point back, but it's now down to the Commissar. He's got three attacks, gets all those hits, right? He's got Power Axe, he's wounded on fours, gets them all. Oh dear, right? So we need to save these on fours and fail two, make one. Okay, so the Sorcerer is on his last wound now, and he's not going to be able to put up with that again, I don't think. Alright, so we'll finish with the Obliterator, it actually does well, it is out of sequence, but it doesn't really affect anything at this point. Uh, but the Obliterator fights, and he's actually done well, he's put another two wounds on the Chimera, so that's actually taken a lot of damage this round. Alright, so not not a brilliant turn there, very really disappointed with uh, what the Sorcerer did, or didn't do. He had every chance of doing it with his Smite, and with his Staff, and with his Crack Grenade. Just couldn't put the cat out, so he's now doomed. But he did get us Master of the Warp for pulling off Warp time, so at least we got one point out of that turn. Couldn't get overwhelming firepower or no prisoners. That Lehman Russ in the corner just held on, did not want to go down. And now it's up to the Acadians to see if we hold this in our turn. If we do, it's two points, but I wouldn't imagine that Rhino is going to survive. Uh, but the best news is this is on his last two wounds, so he's on his last bracket. Of shooting, so he's still hitting on fives. We've seen what this demolisher can do when it hits on fives, so I wouldn't count it out just yet. So we've got a few morale checks to do. We've got one over here. These lost two out of the unit. So what's it going to be? So one, they're okay, and that's the only morale check needed because uh, that squad over there lost a plasma gun, but uh, one is not enough to to cause a morale check. Right, it's Talon's turn to retaliate in turn three. Uh, so this, because it didn't go down, it is severely damaged on his last two hull points. So he's moved half speed, but there's a trick here. They're going to do the Talon tank order for get round behind them. It just means it automatically moves six inches. doesn't matter if it's damaged or not. So he's going to pull forward, and then there's more stratagems in place. So we'll come to that as and when, but expect this to move another six inches forward. So good use of Talon Doctor in there. And in the backfield here for the Imperial Guard, uh, there's just a swarming around to get to these. So they're going to have to kill the Obliterator first, all these guys, to get to the characters bar these vehicles, because these are on offer to these. So there's two characters there, but the Obliterator has to go first if all those large guns want to get a hold of them. Uh, if they do that, then they're going to score themselves hold the line. So they need to clear out all of the Crimson Slaughter, and they'll score a point. That includes the Sorcerer, he's on borrowed time. And if they do take out the Rhino, which is a surety probably, uh, the, everything's fine at it. All the big guns 
if they do take that out that's going to be big game hunter so the imperial guard will catch up on the points if it all goes to plan for them so we're going to move on to the psychic phase so the sorcerer is he going to smite, smite on this. can't it's got to be the nearest unit so it's got to be on the sorcerer himself all right. so it's psycho on sorcerer you're going to smite him so it comes off on nine he's going to try and deny otherwise he's gone so no it's only a six so he is dead doesn't matter about a d3 because he's only got one last wound so he is killed now so that frees them up to do whatever they want right and over here uh, the swarm in it's more good use of the talon rule uh, you can advance and shoot unimpeded but not heavy weapons so the auto cannons are not going to contribute but there's two plasma guns in there so they have advanced closer and they're going to get first rank fire second rank fire order and all the las guns as well so these are going to come under a hail of las fire and uh, this las cannon team is going to get uh, re-roll to hit rolls of one we're going to try and shoot out that rhino in the back right so this layman russ we're going to see some tank orders here so it's a special Talon one, so we're seeing all the Talon tricks here. So let's get around behind them. It automatically moves six. So that's the first step. So it moves to that marker that we'll put down. So it's in close to this Rhino now. And then they're going to play Inspired Tactics, a stratagem. Which means they can play one more order. So because he's a tank commander, he's going to play... He's not going to only play one order, but he's going to play another order on himself. Gunners kill on sight. So although he's hitting on fives, he's going to re-roll one. So he's giving himself every chance of hitting that rhino and so see if we get a strategy back in a five as well that's a one no good so but lots of trickery from the talon coming in this turn we're seeing it all now all right so the demolisher is going to fire first at the rhino so they're going to fire the top twice because the it's worth seeing right now if you do do the talon get around behind them which is that six inch move does not count towards your maximum move for firing your turret twice that's worth seeing so it will fire twice so 2d3 because it's aiming at the eagle this time so the first one is a two, second one is a three. So five shots, not too shabby at all. So hitting on fives, this is the hard part, but re-rolling ones. So it gets one hit, strength ten, needing a three against this rhino. Gets it right, we're saving on a six. Oh, yes. That might be a crucial dice roll there. So we've stopped ourselves from getting D6 damage, but we've got the melter guns to put up with now. So two multi-melters. These are within half range. Reroll ones. Last chance to get a good shot on it here. Get to five. That is a hit. This demolisher is just ruthless. All right, so needing a three to wound. Get to, right, it goes straight through the armor. It's AP minus four, so it's the best of two dice. Oh, takes six so it's already taken a wound so it's taken seven wounds now it's got three left right this team's gonna have a go at it now the crap missile hitting on four so you can hurt it it's missed all right the last pistol and last gun speak up actually get a wound with the last gun so let's see if we can save we do so no trivial wounds there all right he's only got three left he's now gonna have to put up with fire from the aircraft now Right, the Valkyrie's going to chip in now. So because it's still in hover mode, it's going to plus one to its uh, ballistic skill, but minus and one because it's hitting with heavy weapons. So it's back to where it started on fours. So the multi-laser first, got three shots. Uh, gets two. Wounding on fives because it's only strength six. Gets one. Seven on a three. No. Well, no, last two wounds now. So six heavy bolters. Uh, only one. Needing five does not get it right it's up to the multiple rotted pods so 2d6 shots out of this so nine it's good and still fours it's not a good roll only three but this is much like a heavy bolt of strength five ap minus one so fives to wounds does not get any either Ooh. so two wounds left on the rhino there's still more to go at it Got this Lehman Russ executioner. Yeah, I'll pump this. Yeah, so it moved half speed. It is damaged, so it's hitting on fives. Uh, but there's enough shots there to, to make it count. So eight shots out of the auto cannons on the top, hitting on fives against the Rhino. This is so crucial. There's two points at stake here for the Crimson Slaughter. Right, there's three hits, needing uh, fours to wound because it's strength seven. Just one of these will do its damage too. So four's needed, gets two. 
Need to save these on fours. Need to save both of these or it's gone. No, fail both. So it doesn't matter if it explodes, there's nothing around. So that's gone. We're not going to score the two points for defend objective four. So it's everything's against the Crimson Slaughter today. The Imperial Guard are just mopping up. And not only is that not going to be able to be scored for the Crimson Slaughter, it's actually going to give a point away for uh, Big Game Hunter. So the Imperial Guard score of demolishing that Rhino. Right, we're over here now. So they're going to try and crack the Obliterator first. So just trying to shave them down with this Chimera at the back. It's already fired, we're just going to do our save. So the uh, Multi Laser and Stormbolt combo put two wounds on them. We're going to have to save on twos. Save them both, and the heavy bolt that hits twice and wounds twice, we're going to need to save these on threes. We'll get them both, so we've made it through the first stage. Um, but there's a lot of shots coming down on them. Right next to fire is the fire. Three flamers, heavy flamers, go on the Dark Apostle, and the turret weapon goes on the Obliterator to try and single him out. So we've already done the wounds. Uh, five wounds on this Dark Apostle. He's only got one wound left, poor lad. He's going to have to save these on fours. No, he has a good effort. Two fails. He's dead. And the Obliterator has the uh, auto cannon fired at him twice. Uh, but he, he rolls poorly. Only gets two wounds put on him. So we're going to need to save these on uh, JP minus one. So threes. So one goes through. He's taking two damage. So he's got one wound left, the Obliterator. Alright, not erupting with the big gun line yet. Even though that Obliterator is on its last wound. This fires his heavy flamer at the exalted champion now that he's been revealed five wounds for him to take so he's saving on fours gets them all whoa what a champ what an exalted champ uh then the multi laser fires at these gets one wound gonna have to save on a three we get that the saves are coming in now strangely enough <laughs> we've got little to nothing left so now it's time for the big line of guns right He's teasing and he's teasing, but not the gun line yet. It's the Sentinels who fire next on the Obliterator. Get two wounds, he's going to have to save on twos on his last wound, and he makes them. So he's making it difficult for the Imperial Guard, but not difficult enough. Alright, so now it's the gun line. So there's two plasmas in there, rapid firing at the Obliterator. This could be the end. Oh, look, he did an overcharge. Only one hit, that's all it would need if he gets a three. Does not wound. Alright, it's up, to, it's up to the last guns to kill this heroic obliterator. Alright, so 12 las guns just have first rank fired the obliterator. It's pretty appalling, even the last pistol got a wound, so we're coming away with 11 wounds to try and save here on the obliterator. He make, needs to make every single one to stay alive. And he's failed two out of that. So he tried, tried his hardest, but he has succumbed to the weight of fire. So he goes off to the great uh, gig in the sky, and now the Exalted Champion is exposed. Right, so now that the Exalted Champion is the nearest target, the Basilisk is going to finish him off in the corner there. And to make sure of it, they're going to play the same stratagem, it's the third time in a row, Vengeance for Cadia. So reroll the hit and wound against him. So the best of two dice for how many shots for this Basilisk? Well, I'll see if I'll get it back first. Alright, so command stratagem point. command point does not come back. That was a two. Someone said it's pretty hard to read the command dice on this uh, on these, and it is even in person it is, but just easier for us to do it with that dice. So right here we go back to the basilisk then. So two dice, pick the best. So four shots coming at them, hitting on fours with three rolls. Right, so there's three hits right off the bat. Re rolls one of them. Fails one of them, right? So three, and wound on twos here. This is nasty stuff. Right, all wound. Right, we need sixes to stay alive. We wish we could still go to ground, but that doesn't exist anymore. Do not get a single one. Right, so unless you roll three ones here for damage, you're dead. Let's roll them again. Yeah, so D3 each one, and he's totally spanned. Triple six, when we wanted a triple one, that is pretty much been the story of the Crimson Slaughter so far. Right, the last things to fire are the mortar team and they make themselves heard. Eight wounds put on these guys, we thought we were safe but they've just rolled ridiculously well on this one. So seven these on eight, whoa, return, good fortune. 
for the Imperial Guard with good fortune for chaos. They've hang on. That is really crucial. Expect them to be totally dead. But it's crucial. They're not going to contribute, but they will generate a tactical objective for the Crimson Slaughter next turn. Well done, lads. Alright, so that's the end of the Imperial Guard turn. Devastating turn, as usual. And total wipeout. No more Crimson Slaughter in the lines anymore. There's just uh, those two guys at the back behind the tree. Crannon, his poor performing Land Raider, and the Cultist Squad. So we're going to try and hang on still. It was a big scoring round for the Imperial Guard. They scored Objective 3, where the Flyer is. They have got the Heavy Weapons team just on it there as well. And... <coughs> excuse me, so there's a point for that point for killing the rhino for big game hunter and uh, hold the line so all the units were eradicated from the deployment zone so there's another point so three points for the astra militar in this round uh, there's not much left of the crimson slaughter we're going to have to pull our hand on objective cards see what we get if it's a dud then we might have to start thinking about retreating Okay, so we're able to pull two objectives this turn. We are on three objectives, but we're at capacity in our hand. We've already got six. But the two that we uh, generated were Witch Hunter, which we're not going to get because he's too far away, and Defend Objective 3, which is under rule of the Imperial Guard down here, which is never going to happen. So we can't do any of those. But what we can do this turn is try and get no prisoners and overwhelming firepower. So if we can take out this Lehman Russ, we can get two points. And this is what we're banking on. So, Crannon, he's jumped back in the Land Raider. He doesn't want this flyer to come and hunt him down and kill him. That would be too easy. Uh, the unit over there just takes a step back from the objectives and the cultists. Just a few more join the fight over here. We're going to try and uh, take away this unit. So, it's all banking on these last cannons. We're not re-rolling ones with Crannon because he's inside the vehicle. If we can take this out, there's two points. If we don't take it out, we're probably just going to have to concede because we we'll, uh, we'll need the points to stay in the game. So, here we go. Threes to hit, we get three. All right, threes to wound. We get two. Well, there's a stray one all the way over there. So he's only got two hull points left, and we've hit him twice. So you're saving on sixes. So you, oh my word, double six. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That. Right, it's, it's down to the heavy bolters. Uh, this is basic, that might as well just be the story of the game right there. So two hull points left. Can the heavy bolters do it? <laughs> Four hits. Fives to wound. We got three wounds. Seven on fours. Please fail two of these. Gets two fails. Right, we'll polish it off with ease. <laughs> From the land raider. So it's gone. Right, hold the phone. He's going to use his last command reroll to reroll this armor save. So we're going to back first. Does not get the stratagem back or the command point back. And here we go. It's a 50 50, 4 plus, the so tank 50, lives. 50 50. And the game, continue, uh, the game ends. Here we go. Oh. No, still dies. So that's the last stratagem gone. This tank remains dead. Hallelujah. Right, down to where it really matters. We've got the cultists firing at the platoon infantry. So we've got eight in range with the auto guns, hit on fours, there's four. Wound on fours, we'll get two. So seven on fives, makes one, fails one. So one dead, and then we've got two heavy stubbers. They did stand still this time, so they're on good ballistic skill. Get all but one, three to wound. Just two, so seven on fives, what'd you get? Dead. Just one fail. So two guys dead from the platoon. Better than nothing. So there we go. That was a short and swift Crimson Slaughter turn. We've got overwhelming firepower and no prisoners for destroying this Lehman Russ. It's been such a nuisance. It's been so difficult with that Land Raider not firing very well. And it's cost us daily. So we're finally taking that out for two points. But that's it. We're just going to have to grit our teeth and hold on now. Uh, there is a morale check to do for these uh, guardsmen here. So the lost two, leadership seven. So two plus three, 
It's five. They're good. They will hold. Still deadly with a rocket launcher. Never count out a rocket launcher. So that is the end of that turn. Over to the Imperial Guard. So if they can finish off the Crimson Slaughter here. Right, so Imperial Guard turn four now. So the coast is relatively clear, so they're starting to move out. So these advance, they're trying to get to this objective. If they got there, <coughs> that would have been boots on the ground. They would have had three objectives. So no points for that because they just didn't advance far enough. Uh, the heavy weapon squad, well it's not a heavy weapon squad, it's a command squad they come up. As does the the commander. The two commissars are up as well. Uh, big push from the Chimera is on this side, let's have a look. So on this side, uh, the Lehman Russ has turned around, the fly has just moved over slightly, just just doesn't want to give away any cheap points like Scour the Skies that the, that the Crimson Slaughter have, so he's just tucking away. And uh, the Sentinels, all the tanks are coming up to deal with the massive threat of two, Imperial, uh, two Chaos Marines. They need to defend Objective 6, so if they can get there in the next turn, which they surely can't, uh, they'll defend that objective and that'll be two points for them so no points as of yet this turn but there's two in the bag here and obviously they've got the shooting phase to do now so these two don't expect to see them in the next shot all right so already under fire here the flamer has taken or puts a wound on one of them you need to save on a four so he survives and then the multi lasers caused two wounds which you need to save on threes and we do so it's a good start with saved against one chimera so the next one to fire so Flamer. Alright, we'll just do this then. So Flamer is five. Not gonna be so lucky this time, don't think. So threes get four. So save on fours. Come on. So only one dies. Champion still stands, and then the multi-laser has missed two, missed three. Might he hold on? Right, Sentinels here you're gonna fire through the gap in between the tanks, try and take them out. So there's nine shots from these. And the don't it's worth Saying again that Talon do not suffer penalty for moving with heavy weapons on vehicles, so it's coming in very handy. There's only two misses and threes to wound him. That's TV killed. So, right, four wounds he's got to save on his armor. And he does. He takes it all. Wow. Right, like this Chimera at the back. It's going to fire at him, so Stormbolt the first. Gets one hit. No wound. Heavy baller. Gets one hit. One wound. Save on the fourth. Come on. Gets it. Multi laser. Gets two. Three's needed. Fails. <sighs> he survives. Right, he's still out of the woods. This tank can't see, but the fly you can. So here we go then. So heavy ballers. Heavy ballers. Forced to hit. So it's three. Three's to wound. Gets two. Needs to save on fours. Got a feeling this time he's going to go. Yep, yeah, there's a one. Saves his other one, but he finally dies. That's all we can ask for to take all that on his armor. But he's dead now. Right, so the basilisk in the corner now is going to shoot at the land raider. He's going to start chipping away at this now. So how many shots? He's getting five. And hitting on fours. Run out of stratagems now, so he can't do the vengeance for Cadia anymore. So three hits, wounds on threes. Good strength nine. Only one. It's AP minus three, so seven on five. Naked, right. He's not going down like the rest of the tanks. Yeah. Um... Alright, and then the last thing to fire are the mortars. You can just see them back there. Fire all the way over the top onto the cultists. Surprisingly only kill one cultist this time. So, uh, not enough for a morale check, I don't think. So, one plus six is seven. I do pass. Just. Nope, just had double check. That actually leadership six cultists, even with the champion. So, one does go away. So, we'll select this guy. So, he's gone. Alright, but they do hold. They're going to stand there and just stand about. But that is the end of the turn for the Astro Militarum, and no points scored. They needed to get three objectives they tried to advance with this squad to try and get there advance with that squad didn't get that crucial objective so no points for them there they needed this one so obviously they can't get that just yet but they need to defend the one in the distance there so there's two tanks encroaching on that objective 
and if they get there in the next battle round that'll be two points for them I think if the game doesn't end mercifully it might end uh, on turn five so we're going to see just what the last dying breaths of the Crimson Slaughter can do now Death or glory, or perhaps even both. So the Land Raider hasn't, well, it moves forward, but not before Cranon gets out and advances. He's got here. We still are renegade, so we can still advance and charge, and he's just going to have to make it through with this 20 man Overwatch to get in there. If we get in there and do some damage, we could possibly get psychological warfare if that turns up. Uh, we're going to try and defend this objective as best we can. Uh, try and get scour the skies and finish off this unit while we're at it with some shots from the cultists. If we can do all of that, maybe we might be pulling ahead. Right, the cultists have done well now, they've actually picked off all of the remaining unit except the sergeant. So it's now onto the land raid at the fire. So what we're going to do is we're going to plow the heavy bolters into this squad here. Uh, we're going to do the combi bolter at him and then the las cannons at the flyer. So we'll do the combi bolt first, rapid firing at this guy, if we get rid of him that'll just be something. Uh, Reroll ones because of Cranon, get three hits, threes to wound, there's two wounds for him, need to save on fives, and doesn't make them so he's gone, so he's not going to be any trouble. Right, heavy bolters on the team that Cranon will be charging in on, and they all hit, three to wound, uh, three, seven on sixes. <laughs> right, so it's three dead. Right, Laz cannons at the flyer. Right, so four Laz cannons at the hover jet. Uh, it is hovering, so we're hitting on full ballistic skill and threes. And we've hit them all, don't need the rerolls from Cranon. Uh, threes to wound. Make them all. Could this be Sky of the Skies? Right, need four saves of six. Here we go. So it makes one, two, one goes through, there's another one to be made. Right, two go through, being extremely lucky there, the guard, as usual. Um, we'll only do four damage. That could have been Scour the Skies if luck was on our side, but it's not. Right, so that stays in the air. Now it's Cranon, he's going to have to try and get through all of this Overwatch. Right, we're going to do plasmas that are overcharging because this might be the last chance to fire. So two different coloured dice for the two different guys, so six is needed, try and hold on to your hat. We've all missed, but no overheats, so that's that's a stalemate I suppose. Uh, two auto cannons firing at him. Get two hits, oh, five, uh, no, strength seven, so I'm needing threes to wound. Only get one, seven on a four for Cranon. What is that? Makes it on a six. What a ledge. Right, Laz guns to go. Right, so after the Laz guns and Laz pistols shooting, get three hits. So they need a wound on fives against Cranon. Only get one, seven on three. Get it, right, he's getting in. He's going to have his wicked way with these. And he goes in deep. <laughs> right, Cranon is in with all of his buffs. He's got intoxicating elixir, so he's got an extra attack and extra strength. So he's going to come in with five attacks. He's hitting on twos here. Rerolls ones, so he rerolls that. Right, so these hit. It's a death to the false emperor, so we'll get a bonus chance to hit. And we get that as well. Wounded on threes against the guardsman with a power sword. And that is a that's full whack. So six guardsmen fall to the blade. They may be small, but there's 16 attacks coming in here. Hitting on fours. And wound on fives. So. <laughs> looks okay, it looks about half. Right, fives to wound. That's a pretty good roll. Right, so there's three, four. Four wounds on Cranon. He's going to have to save on fives. Uh, three, sorry. And he mixed them all. Right, he's, his armor holds up just fine. Right, so it's big casualties from this unit here. They're all within three or six of a commissar, so they can't take his leadership. So we have to get this figured out what's happening here. Right, so with the Lord, because he is a Lord Commissar, he's just the normal one, he is the Lord, so they're going to actually be Leadership 9, 
They've lost eight this round so far, so anything but a one will be a fail. And with the new FAQ rules, uh, we're going to have to see what happens here. So, morale check. Five, right, so they're going to lose four. Uh, but he can kill one and you can re-roll that. Right, the Lord Commissar's killed one and he's going to try and re-roll that. So, again, it's the same situation. Anything but a, it's a five again, right. So, four is going to is going to go from the squad, but that is... That's a good uh, representation of just what the Commissar does now. There's pros and cons to it. We've just seen a con. If you're all lower than what the original one was, at least too low, then it's worth shooting a guy. But I suppose it's a good example of just how tricky that new Commissar rule is. It's not as simple as it used to be. Alright, so after all that acrobatic rules, acrobatics and gymnastics, that's how it's turned out. So there's been another four casualties there so that's actually got the crimson slaughter psychological warfare which is really apt for the crimson slaughter if you know their background so just one point in that turn but it was worth it because we've blocked we're now on objective four if we can hold that for the imperial guards next turn there's two points up for grabs there we just have to die slowly Right, Imperial Guards turn five, so it feels like this could be the tipping point. Uh, the game is hanging in the balance here. So the Chimeras have gone around here. So this one advance, doesn't advance, sorry, it just moves to here, so it can fire at the cultists in the distance. And it moves on to this objective, which is a defend objective. So if the game continues, then that's two points for them there. This one advances because it's damaged, but it does eventually get onto that objective, but it can't fire this turn. So there's another uh, scoring opportunity to generate if the game continues, but they don't actually need that objective. They're just trying to block the Crimson Slot from scoring now. Uh, here, Crannon, he's out in a limb. There he is in the distance. And now he's got to put up with the brunt of all this firepower. He's got a Wallow trait which gives him an extra wound and, uh, and then ignores wound on a 6 plus trait, but he's going to need it. He's going to have to put up with all this stuff. And we saw what happened to the other team that was here, lined up for the kill. So we're probably going to cough up Warlord kill here if we're not... If, if we're un... well, we need to be lucky to have him survive. And to add insult to injury, the uh, the Imperial Guard squad just drops out of that combat and gets onto this objective anyway. And with objective secured, they're going to whip that away from the Crimson Slaughter. So they're not going to be able to claim defend objective force. That's just been a thorn in our side that objective just couldn't get to it last turn because the land raider just couldn't get there and now it's gone forever so we just have to hold on to our hats and put up with all that gunfire at Crannon and hopefully we can make it through and the game ends but we should be so lucky if that happens so we're going to open up with the psychic phase so the psychic is going to smite Crannon nothing we can do about it and that passes on the 8th so d3 mortal wounds for him so it's going to be 2 mortal wounds because of our warlord trait We've got six saves. No, he takes his first two wounds. Not a good start for him. Right, Crannon, half of the backfield stuff's fired at him now. We're just going to see how it goes. So we've had a bolt gun here. Wounds him. The Lehman Russ hitting on fives because it's damaged. Missed every single shot. And that was a big sigh of relief. Uh, Chimera doesn't do well. Sentinels don't really do well. But all in all, we've got, with all that firing, we've got one heavy bolt of shot to save on a four. Which we don't do, and then our Warlord trait is seven on six. We get it. It's worked. And then we've got five ordinary shots. These mostly came off the multi lasers for the Sentinels. So five shots to save on armor save. And they all make it as well. Right, he's passed the first test. But we've still got uh, even the shotgun fired at him and some bolters here. So we've still got a Laz Cannon, the Flyer, and the Basilisk potentially to fire at us. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet. Right, so because he took two wounds, just to keep a, a track on it, he took two wounds off the uh, smite attack with his warlord trait, giving him a plus one wound, he's got four left. So he's just going to try and end it right here, right now, with a last cannon shot. So it's hitting on threes, rerolling ones. So it's a direct hit, wound on a two. Gets it, saving on a four plus invulnerable. We get it, denies the last cannon. Right, so the... Hail of gunfire does not end. The flyer is next. Fires a Kralin. We've just done all the shots all together. 
Uh, he's actually came away with six wounds that he's going to have to save at AP minus one because of the rocket pods and heavy bowlers. Fours to save. Come on, son. He's failed three, which is average. Saved on sixes with his warlock trait now. To ignore wounds. No, he's taken three. He's got one wound left. He's hanging on. That warlock trait's coming in handy. He's still hanging on. Hmm. Now he's going to have to go toe to toe. With the Basilisk or the Mortar team, what are you picking? <laughs> uh, let's do the Basilisk one. Alright, he's going to sort them out with the Basilisk. So 2d6, pick your best. Let's see what we got. How many shots? Five shots, hitting on fours. We're really hoping for a double one there. So there's three hits, wound on twos. Get some more, three. Right, saving on invulnerable fours, come on. Makes two, fails <coughs> one, so D3 damage for him. Only one. Need to roll a six here, or oh, we've lost Cranon. Yes! Oh, what a hero. <laughs> he lives. Cranon, the relentless, proves to be relentless. He's still in his last wound, he's bleeding badly. And now the mortar team, uh, well, surely you're going to shoot into him. Uh, yeah, um, well, there's options here. Do the mortar team shoot at him or the cultists? Or I think we'll leave, leave. I think we'll leave it down to a hand to hand combat. All right, because there's two commissars here ready to go in on him, sort yeah, out his last the, wound. Uh, the claw of the desert tigers, or whatever. It oh, is. yeah, he's got a relic as well. One of those commissars. So, this mm, mm, at least he'll die a hero in combat. All right, so we've done the mortar team in the distance, and we've done the this chimera and the Lehman Russ with the Punisher cannon all on the cultists. Nine cultists dead. In total, it wasn't too bad really. The tanks didn't do so well, but the mortars did. So it's going to go straight onto the assault phase here. Who is charging first? Who do wants... the commissar first? Right, the commissars, which they're both commissars. No, he's the Lord Commissar. Oh, okay. Right, so he goes in. Let's see if we can wipe him out with the plasma shot to the face. So we're going to let's see if we can reroll ones in Overwatch. Right, so we are going to overwatch the plasma pistol and we're going to overcharge it. We're going to go out like a hero. If we can kill ourselves, that'll be better than falling to a lowly commissar. So we do get reroll ones though. So six. No, don't get reroll that either. So he's made it in and then Lord the commissar. Lord Commissar goes in. He's in two. Okay, attacked by commissars. Right, so this Lord Commissar, he's going to step up first. So he's got the claw of the desert tigers, which is basically it's a power sword it's damage two and you get an extra two attacks so he's gonna have five attacks hitting on twos makes all but one and then these wound on fives because it's strength user so this might be challenging for him uh, yeah oh, oh it's not <laughs> it's not right so it's all wound this is surely the end it is damage two but it's not gonna matter that well, actually it might because uh we still have to Make our invulnerable saves and then our other saves. Okay then, fours to save. He's failed three. This is this is him dead. So he's he's failed three, and he needs sixes to save because two damage each. So he's going to be killed by a Lord Commissar, and he is only save one. So he's taken five damage. He's dead. That's a point for Warlord kill. For all the and assassinate military and assassinate. So there's two points. It's very crucial at this point in time. Right, so after the disappointing slaying of Cranon, or was he dragged back in the Land Raider? He did, he did far too well there to just go out like that. But anyway, that's what's happened. So we've lost nine colours in total, so leadership test. So we're going to lose eight more, that's the whole squad gone. So now we've reduced down to a Land Raider left. The Astra Militarum have one point for Kill the Warlord, another point for Assassinate. And then they're holding three objectives now with infantry units. They've got the heavy weapon squad there. Troops on the ground. Team there and a team there. So it's troops on the ground. How many points is that worth? Uh, so that's worth D3. To a D3. So we've got only one. A merciful roll there. Secure objective five. Have we got that? Nope. No. Right. So three points there for the Astra Militarum. Defend objective six. All right. So we've just tallied up the points. That's three. Three points for the Imperial Guard this turn, and what it means is they're now neck and neck at seven, seven. 
and the game might end. So it might end a draw here. We haven't had a draw since forever. So it's my roll on a three plus. The game continues. Please roll a one. The game continues. Alright, so I'm just going to call it there. We've fought bravely. I can't generate an objective because we're on here. Can't do anything else. Uh, the Imperial Guard have just gotten nearly all the objectives now, so they're going to generate loads of tackling objective cards. And since we're neck and neck, we're not ahead anymore, so we can't just hold on. We've only got a Land Raider left. So we fought hard there against all of the odds that were thrown at us. I feel like that was the case. Tried our best, but fate was not on our side today. And saw a lot of tricks from the uh, Talon today, so all the good rules in effect, so that was quite impressive to see. Uh, yeah. Lament not killing him with the sorcerer. If we just got that, uh, I would have got us some glory there. But he's, just nothing was happening, it seemed, for the Crimson Slaughter. And the Imperial Guard did what they do best and just kill you, stone dead. Every chance they get, just f fed in piecemeal and annihilated. Just about only the Land Raider stands and it will just slowly slink off the battlefield. So it's a win to the Astra Militarum.